Hello, my name is PCSO Craig Gibbs and I am one of the School Liaison Officers for the South of Suffolk. Along with my colleagues, we cover 126 schools, which is approximately 50,000 students. Our job is really broken down into three sectors. The first sector is to try and keep every young person in education. The second is to try and ensure that young people don't get criminal records. And the third is probably the most important, and that is to make sure that every young person, or actually every person, feels happy and safe within a school environment. Now, today I'm going to talk to you about antisocial behaviour. Now it's not the most interesting of subjects, but what me and my colleagues have found is that antisocial behaviour is a real big pitfall and some young people are tripping up over it, which means that they're going to get a criminal record. Now from the age of 10, you can get a criminal record and that criminal record can affect the colleges and sixth forms that you can apply to, the university courses that you can go on to, the countries that you may be able to travel to when you're older, and also some convictions may mean that you're not even able to look after your own children. Now, the slide that's behind me is what we use to describe antisocial behaviour. Now, what it says is that antisocial behaviour is capable of causing nuisance and annoyance, likely to cause harassment and arm or distress, creates significant and persistent problems within the neighbourhood and leaves communities intimidated and afraid. Now, can you think of any antisocial behaviour that may happen within your school? Using those words there. And if you can think of anything, can you think of what the consequences would be within the school? I also want you to think how you would feel if you were a victim of antisocial behaviour and also how you think antisocial behaviour may have an impact on someone's life. Now what I'll do is I'll give you five minutes to discuss that between yourselves and your teachers. And that five minutes starts now. So you're probably wondering why I asked you those questions about antisocial behaviour in the classroom. Now, the best way anyone's ever described antisocial behaviour to me is if a student done it within the classroom, they'd either get told off, a detention, maybe um, suspended or expelled. But if it happened out on the street, the likelihood is you're going to be arrested by the police. Now, the only exception for this is um, if you talk too much in class. Now I'm sure the teachers have made you aware of who you are, so I don't think we can arrest you for that. Hopefully some of the examples that you came up with are actually here. So what we've got is noise, harassment, vandalism, graffiti and fly tipping, nuisance neighbours, intimidation and threats and violence. So if we look at these, or a couple of them, in a bit more detail. So if we look at intimidation and threats. So if, for instance, you're standing outside of a shop with a group of friends and an old person is trying to use the facilities um, and you're blocking the doorway, um, being a bit rude, using some strong language, so some swear words, that can be intimidating. And it's not just down to if, you f if that's what you're trying to portray, if you're trying to be intimidating as a group, but if that in individual does feel intimidated and they call the police, we have a duty to investigate that. Now, when we investigate it, we'll go and look at CCTV footage and try to see what's going on. Um, and if you're in school uniform, we're pretty good at um, recognising uh, school uniform as being schools officers. So we will come to the school, we'll ask for you who this person is and for our identification, and we'll come and speak to you about what has happened. Now, talking of CCTV, do you know that you're actually captured on roughly 70 times a day? So that is how us as the police, we have to deal with a lot of things via CCTV footage. So we talk about graffiti and fly tipping. So graffiti is a crime. The only time that you're actually allowed to graffiti is if there is permission from the building owner or the council and they have provided you with a graffiti wall. Let's be honest, the skill of spray painting and the art technique is really difficult and we're not going to be all be the next Banksy. So, depending on what has also been written, that could be a hate crime. And that was obviously what Ellen was speaking about earlier. 
So if we start looking at the impacts of antisocial behaviour, the inability to sleep, feeling anxious and constantly on edge, frightened to go out, not feeling safe in your own home, changing your routine to avoid problems, wanting to move, thinking nothing will change and it will never end. Now, can you imagine being scared in your own home but afraid to go out? I definitely think you'd feel alarmed, harassed and distressed, which means it's a crime. It's really important that if you know someone or you recognise any antisocial behaviour that you let someone know. There's a lot of places that you can, or people that you can contact, and that's on the slide now. But what you need to remember is that the most important people that you speak to are your responsible adults. And when we say responsible adults, we just don't mean mums and dads. We mean mums, dads, parents, carers, guardians, teachers, aunts, uncles, or another adult that you trust. It's anyone that would be able to get you help. But it doesn't just have to be you, it can be someone else that needs help. And you might be that voice that gets them the help that they need. We do have a duty to look after ourselves, but we also have a duty to look after each other. Now, as I said, antisocial behaviour is not the funnest subject. But hopefully there's some information there that you can use, which might, if you're in a situation when you're older, that you might think, actually, I could get myself in trouble here. If you do have any questions, you can obviously ask us if you see us around your school, any, me or any of my colleagues. Or you can speak to your teachers, who will be able to put some questions together and then forward it onto the school's team at Suffolk Police. But the one thing you need to remember is, you're in year six now. Next year, year seven, you're going to have so much fun up at high school. And that's where you do see us more. So do, if you do see us, do say hello.